The Radeon 6600 XT has just come out. Could this be our $200 hero? No, this is a tier of graphics card that used to be well under $200, but which is now being marketed at $380 and selling for even higher still. It is a sad day indeed for people looking to build a gaming PC. I'm hoping that things will get better, but as it stands, let's consider our options for budget builds right now. Discrete GPUs. There are no budget options available. But if you already have an aging gaming PC and really need a performance boost, then the most affordable new graphics cards available right now will either be the GeForce 3060 or Radeon 6600 series of card. These are marketed as Ultra 1080p cards, and at that resolution they'll certainly perform great, as you should expect from a $300 plus card. It's interesting to compare them with the previous generation. The GeForce 3060, for instance, is pretty much a 2060 Super, but with more VRAM and is launching for $70 cheaper, which actually sounds okay. Meanwhile, the Radeon 6600 XT is kind of like a 5700 XT, but with ray tracing support and is being marketed at $20 less. So this means that we haven't moved far along the price performance curve in the last two years. And the situation was already bad back then, but it's been made worse thanks to global shortages which are pushing the prices up higher still. But since this is the situation right now, this is what's on offer. Of the two, the GeForce 3060 is cheaper and a bit slower than the 6600 XT, but has superior ray tracing support and supports DLSS, which I think makes it a better option overall. The 6600 XT, while a bit more expensive, is also a bit faster at 1080p and is more power efficient. In fact, it's very good for power efficiency. However, it isn't so capable of ray tracing and it has a few limitations that will stop it from performing as well as it could have done at higher resolutions as well. Sure, it has FSR, but honestly I haven't been too impressed with that just yet. If you can stretch a bit further still, the GeForce 3060 Ti is unquestionably the best choice right now. It's fast enough for 1440p gaming and is just a capable all-rounder. But it also costs more, so there's that. And that's the depressing situation in the discrete graphics card market. Now to go cheaper still. APUs. APUs are CPUs combined with a GPU. In theory, this is great. It combines the two most expensive components of your PC into one affordable package. However, I think the latest generation of AMD APUs, which have just been released, are a bit lopsided. The CPU portion of them is very powerful, but the graphics card bit is not. The Vega graphics side of things hasn't really progressed much beyond those seen in APUs from three years ago, which I am bitterly disappointed about. So it's a struggle for me to recommend these as budget gaming options, though if you don't mind ultra low resolutions then you can still get by with them. And there is always the option of slotting in a discrete graphics card into these machines at a later date, once prices for them drop or whatever. But until then, let's look at the new APU offerings. At the top of the line is the Ryzen 5700G, which contains an 8-core Zen 3 processor. This is overkill for your gaming needs. Buy this if you're going to be rendering or encoding or doing other CPU demanding workloads. Unfortunately, this is bundled with just 8 Vega graphics cores, which isn't very powerful and it will restrict you to the lowest of resolutions. And for $360, it's hardly a cheap option if you're going to use this to game on a budget. But it is great if you need a powerful processor and don't want to spend on a graphics card. The next tier down is more attractive for gamers. The 5600G is just $260, and its processor still contains 6 cores and 12 threads. In my opinion, this is the perfect gaming balance right now, and while it isn't as fast as the 5600X, this processor will still be great for gaming. This APU features 7 Vega compute units to drive the graphics. In practice, this isn't much slower than the 8 Vega CUs seen in the more expensive Ryzen 5700G, but neither is great. So yeah, if you're looking for a single component to tide you over, then the 5600G will run games slowly now, and its processor is powerful enough to drive games once you slot a dedicated graphics card in at a later date. In the past, there have been sub $200 and even sub $100 APUs, but AMD has forsaken us. The 5300G kind of exists, but it's only available in pre-built systems. This one has four cores and eight threads and six Vega CUs, which puts the whole thing on the bare minimum of what you should be looking for right now. You can still get an older 3400G or even an Athlon APU, but I think these are approaching the end of their lives, and with the Navi powered APUs just around the corner, I would save your money and hold on for just a bit longer. After all, the right time to buy these lower priced older APUs was three years ago. The Steam Deck. I didn't think I'd be recommending an entire mobile gaming platform as an alternative, but these are strange times indeed, and given the situation, the Steam Deck is a bit of a miracle. A whole budget gaming system for $400, which is exactly what we need right now. 
Its processor is a bit slower than the Ryzen APUs I've just covered, but that's fine since those were overkill for budget gaming. But the Steam Deck's killer feature is its graphics cores. It features eight RDNA 2 units, which appear to be quite a bit better than the Vega ones found in current APUs. And they're also capable of ray tracing, because why not? So in other words, the Steam Deck features the APU that I've been waiting for, and that is currently being withheld from regular PC builders. Given its mobile form factor, it isn't going to deliver as much power as a desktop setup with it in would. There aren't yet benchmarks out for it either, but Valve claims that even the Steam Deck can run anything in the Steam library, which is hopeful indeed. It isn't out until next year, and isn't going to be anywhere near as fast as the discrete cards I've covered already, but this looks to be the budget gaming setup that we really need right now. The fact it's portable and comes with its own screen and controls is just icing on the cake at this point. So why can't we get this APU and just slot it into a normal PC? Well, I think it's to do with the RAM. The Steam Deck contains some really cool modern stuff that isn't available to the rest of us, and this is what's needed to get the most out of its graphics cores. To summarise, now is a terrible time for PC builders, and for the best bang for our buck, we need to look elsewhere, and the Steam Deck is one such option. Which brings me to the consoles. I would never use a console just because I value the extra features that you can do with a PC, is what I spend my time doing after all. But if you're just wanting to game and don't want to spend silly money, then the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S or X is a darn sight better and cheaper than whatever the PC market can currently offer. Just get one of these instead and come back to the PC market in a few years' time to see if things have improved. Game streaming. If you really want to do PC gaming, then perhaps look into Stadia or GeForce Now. These haven't been too popular just yet, and I'm yet to investigate them myself, but with the market the way it is, they're becoming increasingly attractive options for people desperate for a spot of PC gaming. You could use your existing PC to run these things, and they may open the door to higher quality graphics than your rig can currently power. Why not give them a go? So yeah, those are your options. You could also consider buying stuff secondhand. Who knows, you might get a good deal. Or you could get a gaming laptop, which, given the desktop situation, might not be much worse for your money just be sure to read the reviews first. But as far as budget PC gaming goes, to see the sixth tier of graphics cards selling for more than $300 is really depressing. I would not encourage you to buy right now if you can help it. Look elsewhere and perhaps get something a little silly or flamboyant instead. Sure, you might still get ripped off, but it becomes harder to see how much you're being conned versus the tech from yesteryear when you buy your stuff in a strange form factor.